Aloha and welcome to Knitted Paradise, where the needles are clicking and the yarn is squishy. My name's Lucia. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Pearl of the Pacific. Today is Tuesday, April 1st! Yay! And I don't have anything funny for April Fools. I tried to think of something all day, like to joke that I was quitting knitting, but then you all know that's not true, so it's not really funny. <laughs> anyway, a happy April Fool's Day. I hope either you played a fantastic prank on someone or you got fooled quite well. And let's continue on. It's episode 22. I don't have a title yet, so by the time I post it, hopefully I have a title. I didn't really think of a, a topic for today. I've been really busy at work. We have a seminar coming up this weekend. It's kind of our annual seminar where a bunch of people from all over the country who we work with come into town and we have a three-day seminar. So we've been doing a lot to get ready for that. And we're doing pretty well. We've got all of the stuff organized. We've got all of the exercises planned out and it's just a matter of all the little details that need to happen before it's a go. So that's good. We're feeling pretty relaxed in the office, which was nice because last year it was kind of hectic. So we're doing good this year, but it means that, well, one, it means I've been having lots of meetings, so I've been having lots of work knitting. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of draining because there's lots to do. Anyway, enough of the gabbing, let's get started with Blow the Conch Shell. It's now April 1st, so the March Knit Along is over, so hopefully you got all your green things posted in the thread. And now we're on to blues! So anything you knit, or spin, or crochet, or weave, or anything related to fibery goodness it counts and post a picture of your finished object in the thread. I've already locked the March thread and opened an April thread. And so we have a prize drawing. If you don't remember, here's the prize. It's a Nipix Stroll Fingering in Pacific. Pacific Blues. Or maybe it's just Pacific. Yeah, it's just Pacific. And there's a little more green in it than is showing up. But that's it. So let's pull for the prize. I think there was 13 entries. Have it up. There were 13. Well, there's 12 because you don't count me. So let me, where did I put that random number generator thingy? Hold on. Ha ha, there it is. Okay. Max number would be 13. Your ram num random number is 8. So there it is. Here, let me click back to the screen. There it is. And number 8 is... I can scroll down. Luckily, they're all on one page. Phoenix Fire! And she knit an adorable little owl. Very cute. Has a little green face. So, yes, that counts. She asked if it counts. So, yes, it does. It's very cute. The eyes are very cute. And she is Tracy from North Carolina. So, Tracy, get in contact with me your Ravelry PM and let me know your snail mail address and I will send this out to you very soon so that you can use it for the, the April knit along. I've been keeping it in a bag to keep it as cat hair free as possible and in a cabinet so hopefully it's pretty cat hair free at this point. So congratulations, Phoenix Fire. And yeah, I don't have a prize yet for the April Knit Along. Uh, if anyone wants to donate anything, that'd be 
welcome if you're trying to get rid of things in your stash or whatever or I'll stash dive into my stash and find something anyway let's get to on the island works in progress I have not touched my cardigan it's the Chimmer Cardigan by Amy Herzog out of Cascade Superwash Sport in Jet. I didn't even bring it out. It's been in, in a cabinet in my room because it's at the point where it, I, it takes a little more concentration and I just haven't had the time or energy to do it. So that hasn't gotten any attention. The Gryffindor scarf hasn't gotten touched. Uh, but the Flying Dutchman socks have gotten a lot of attention because that's been my work knitting. Here they are. Remember last week on the podcast, I showed you how I cast on the toe, and then I did the rest of the toe in that blue, and then I switched to um, the, the main skein, I guess. This is the coordinating color, and this is the main skein. And this is the Loopy U Seasoning Series in Icicles. And these are going to be a pair of socks for my husband. And I did end up leaving them on size zeros because I liked that dense fabric. And so I actually have 80 stitches around on each sock so that they fit him. And I've tried them on and they fit him well. And I'm just cruising along. It's all stockinette on the foot. Now I know why people do stockinette socks because it's super fast. I find them super boring. But <laughs> anyway, I'll be excited when I get to the heel and then the leg is where the patterning is. There's a, it's a really cool, there's like ocean waves and then a ship on top of it. It's done in intarsia in the round, so I'm excited to get to that. But here they are so far, they're not very exciting. And I hope you were all able to see my toe cast on last week. Here it is. Oh, we'll do the other one. This is just marking which is the first sock because they're both stockinette. I don't know which one's the first one. But here you can see the toe. So that's what it looks like. It still looks like that seamless um, cast on. And then I do the like knit one, make one right, make one left at the edges increases and the first two rounds I do I increase both rounds and then I do it every other row after that until I get to maybe four within where I want to be and I'll do a I'll do two knit rounds in between the increase rounds for the last couple just so it creates it's not as it's not as harsh of a um, you know it's not like angle 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 straight so it's not as harsh of a an angle there it's a little more smooth which I like so and the same thing at the toe having those two increase rounds in the beginning creates just a little bit more round it's not super round toe by any means but that's that. So when I get to the heel, maybe I'll save that for next week. I'm going to do a bottom of the foot gusset. So that would be the top of the foot. This is the bottom. They look the same at the moment, so it doesn't matter. But I'll do some increases in the middle and uh, to increase for just a little gusset. And then I'll change back to this blue for the heel, and I'll probably do the fishlets fish lips kiss heel because I really like short row heels and um, and having it in the contrasting color will be nice in case my husband wears through it I can just take out the heel and knit it up so that'll be good and that's that those are real exciting I know and uh, let's see. So that's it for on the needles at the moment. Not a whole lot. I also have, I'm working on designing a series of socks based on the Avengers. And I started the next pattern in that series. So I finished the Hulk ones, which I think I showed before. And now I'm doing the Iron Man ones. I'm not going to show them until they're done because 
they may change four or five times. I have written up a pattern, but I want to now test it myself to see how it's going, and then I'll send it out for test knitters, and then you know I'll do the final ones, and I'm just kind of going through the series period or slowly, and so. That's behind the scenes. So there is another sock on the needles, but I'm not showing it yet. Uh, I did have a few things set sail. I finally finished the York Mittens, or the York Mitts. No, they are the York Mittens, by Mariana Wagner out of Shibui Baby Alpaca DK. And that's what This is what they look like here. I can put on both of them. Ta-da! There are two. They are done. They do have the flip top. I need to block them, I realized. But... Ta-da! So last time I told you that this part was getting really narrow, so I ripped it back all the way, picked up the stitches again, and um, put more stitches here, a lot more stitches there, and knitted up straight. And you can see I did a lot of like one-way increase or decreases because there were more stitches here. In order to do the kitchener at the top, I needed to have the same amount of stitches. So they look a little funky, but they serve their purpose. They're nice and warm, and they'll do well. So I need to block them. I realized I was so frustrated with them. I finished them. I was like, I'm done. So I need to block them tonight. And then I can give them to my friend. Of course, now that the weather's warming up, I don't know how much I'll actually use them, but they're done. And the other thing I finished was my Simple Skip Socks by Adrian Koo. And the main color is Diabolical Strong Arm Skinny and Rock and Roll. Where you can see the, the skip pattern. And the heels and the toe and the cuffs, heels, toes, and cuffs on both of them, right of Knit Pick Stroll in the Nevermore colorway. I finally looked it up. <laughs> I figured this is the last time I'm going to show the socks. I should probably know what color it is. So these are these socks. I wore them today, which is why they're a little stretched out. I washed and blocked them, and then I said, you know what? They kind of match my outfit. So I wore them. They're really comfy. I like them, and but there's a little bit of cat hair. So those are the two things I finished. Wow, that was fast. How much time are we at? Twelve minutes, thirteen minutes. Yeah. I did get some things from the mainland, like the real mainland. Well, I'm on the mainland. I forget this. Sometimes I daydream, pretend I'm in Hawaii, and then I look outside and there's still piles of snow on the ground and I realize I'm not. Anyway, I ordered some things off eBay, some, I guess, knitting notions. I got a, well, these aren't them. Maybe they're in them. I think there's one in my other bag. I got a pack of scissors, because I had gotten some of these before, and maybe the new ones made it into here. Because you know I have these little notion pouches in all my bags. Here's some of the new scissors. So I got a pack of these. They're foldable scissors. You can see they do fold up if you hold the thing in. They fold up into this nice little thing so they don't poke through anywhere. And so I bought a pack of like 12 of them. They were like 99 cents or maybe even cheaper. Got a whole pack of those. So now all my bags have them and I have a ton of extra to just kind of keep around. Because you always need a pair of scissors in your bag and these are great to have. They're super cheap. And I got a set of at one point in time, a lot of people were getting a set of those, like, China needles. So I finally broke down and got myself a set. And this is what the packaging looked like. I've already taken them all out and unpacked them. But they come like this in the pouch 
put the needle size in there. These are the Chinese sizes, so you have to figure out what they relate to in English sizes. They also come with this kind of fun looking needle gauge, but the numbers on it are the China numbers, so it doesn't mean a whole lot. But they also come with, which is kind of invaluable, is a, a needle, a yarn needle, which is what I'm trying to dig out of my kit here. So they all come with one of these. Hold in the middle and then. So they all come with one of these needles. But if you've ever tried to thread yarn through that thing, you realize it's kind of impossible. And I'd been using, I have a, a needle threader for like thread thread, but the the yarn was being a little too heavy on it and I broke it. Those things are cheap anyway. But I found you can get yarn needle threaders. Oh yeah. So you take this, it's this really thin thing, and you stick it in the hole. I don't know if you can actually see that. Maybe it'll focus. And you stick your yarn through this. Let's see if I can get an end of a yarn. Haha. -ha. So you stick your yarn end through this hole, which is pretty big and easy to stick things through. Ooh, let's keep it through the hole. And then you pull this through, and your needle is threaded. Ta-da! That's the only way I can get it to focus. So that's really nice. There's also a smaller end if you wanted to use it for thread, actual thread, but this is awesome. So I now have, so each, you get a set of, I think it's like 12 or 13 needle sizes, and each one of them comes with one of these. So now all of my bags have a darning needle, and I got a set of these that was really cheap. And I mean, all in all, I think I spent $20 and I got a set of needles that all come with needles and I got the needle threader and I got the scissors and oh, I got some stitch markers, some of those locking stitch markers in various colors and which I forgot to bring out. But this is what the needles look like. Let me get a decent sized one. They come in, I use my needle gauge to measure, and I, they come in like triple zero. They're really small. Up to, the set I got was triple zero up to size eight, I think. Yeah. So here, I'll show you the size eight. And they've got a nice cable. It's actually very flexible. And I think I'm going to enjoy knitting with these. They do have a little bend here at the end, but this join seems pretty good. They've got a little bend here, so if that bothers you, then that's a problem. But they're a nice length. They've got a little like film on them, but I can probably just wash that off. I don't see that being a problem. but. I think I got the 32 length cord, but yeah. Oh, hi! You gonna come say hi? Of course, now that I have everything on my lap, the cat wants to come say hi. So I have them. I got a binder, and do you want to come sit? Okay, you can come sit. You just want to lick the plastic. He likes licking plastic. I don't know why. But I have a binder and I got a bunch of um, sheet protectors and I put in the corner, you can't see that, what size needle is in here. And so each page has the needle in it. And I've got some of my other, like I have some other size threes and here's my one and a halfs and size two. And so yeah. Oh, my 1.5s aren't in there. So that's my needle binder. 
to keep my fixed circulars because they don't I showed you my interchangeable case but they don't fit all my fixed circulars I don't have a lot of them until I got that set I really did not have that many hi Pan how are you so that's how I organize my needles that my fixed circulars and that's working out quite well I don't plan on having a lot of them because I have an interchangeable set, which serves me quite well. So that's my From the Mainland. I do have a From My Holly. I realize I've been kind of skipping over that section a lot. But I wanted to share a little bit about Hawaii. I grew up in a ranch town, and which... I know it's kind of weird to think of a ranch town in Hawaii, but the town that I'm in, or my parents are in, the uh, town I grew up in is called Waimea. Uh, it's on the Big Island. There's a Waimea on every island, but it's the Waimea on the Big Island. And it's on, or it's in Parker Ranch, and Parker Ranch used to be the largest privately owned ranch in the United States for a very long time and it's since been kind of sold into portions and um, the family still owns a lot of the the ranch I mean obviously they own the ranch but there's still a lot of open land that they own that they use as a ranch in our town and so there's a lot of horses in our town a lot of people ride horses a lot of people own horses um, when my mom moved there only 35 years ago, the cowboys used to ride their horses to work, and there used to be a tie, tie pole, I guess you'd call it, in the middle of town, right in front of the bar in the middle of town, and they'd, you know, after work, come and tie their horses up and go in the bar and have some drinks, and she said one night that she was there, you know, and hanging out, and, uh, which is kind of funny to me because she doesn't drink anymore. <laughs> and um, so one of the band was playing a song and all of the cowboys got up and danced the hula just randomly because that's what they do. Like, that's what you do in Hawaii. And she just thought that that was awesome. This is the town that she was new to and that was awesome. I would have thought that was awesome. And so speaking of ranch town, I rode horses growing up. I started when I was about eight, and I still ride whenever I get the chance, and when I was 13, my parents gave me a horse. They thought, you know, I was little, and I was like, I want to ride horses, I want to ride horses, and I thought, oh, it's one of those things, she's a little girl, you know, everyone wants to ride horses, and then they realized that my aunt is really into horses, my uncle is a jockey. So horses were kind of in my blood. So finally they gave in. They're like, okay, we'll give her lessons. And then, of course, you know, a year and a half later, I'm asking for a horse. So finally when I was 13, they got me a horse. And this is a horse that I had ridden for a little while. Um, I'd kind of just, you know, been moving up and I'd gotten to, you know, ride this horse. And I've been riding a lot of horses that were for sale. And they'd get sold and then I'd, you know, ride another one. And then, anyway... And my mom said that she had never thought that someone could bond with a horse until, like, really, really bond with a horse, until she saw me with my horse. And she said, that's the horse. That's the one. Like, that has to be hers. So, this is my horse. I brought home a picture today. I had it at work. So, the, his name is Salsa Picante. Maybe it'll focus. It's still trying to get, it's confused because it's glossy. It's an actual photograph versus other things. Anyway, maybe it'll focus. But he is a quarter horse Appaloosa. That's a better color. And this is by the place where I used to have him. And yeah, he was about as tall as I was which was kind of fun, his, you measure right here. He was just a little bit taller than I was, and he was about a year older than I was, so we were pretty similar in a lot of, I mean, similar as someone in their horse. 
but he was born on one of the other islands and he was abused by his original owners and then he was brought to my island and his second owner renamed him Salsa and treated him very very well and kind of you know went through that whole recovery process and then his owner after that wasn't didn't abuse him but was really rough with him so when I got him I had to go through a whole nother recovery process and so we really bonded over that and we really I mean he was kind of my best friend all throughout you know like middle school and high school so it was a really special bond that I had between you know me and my horse and it's really funny because yeah you kind of bond with some horses and then there's some horses that you really bond with and that was me and salsa so it was kind of funny the other girls at the barn said he had a salsa meter I mean a Lucia meter because when I would drive up he'd start whinnying in his stall and he can't really see the cars from his stall but he would know that it was me and he'd get really excited and when I would go on trips he would do all these crazy like he'd start acting out when I was gone so he knew when I was gone you know not just because I wasn't there but he knew when I was you know on vacation and you know, like traveling for with family and stuff and then I'd come back and they'd tell me all these stories and that's not my horse so it was really funny that he really you know was emotionally attached to me which was kind of special but when I went to college I ended up selling him because I just I wasn't there enough and uh, he went to a good home and they took very good care of him so all in all it was good I still miss him I wish you know I had gotten to spend more time with him but it is what it is I moved on and hopefully one day you know I'll be able to ride some more and find another horse that I bond with so that's a little bit about me and growing up in my ranch town and before I say goodbye, I wanted to tell you what I'm wearing. I was wearing this all day at work, actually. It's my Manic Panic cowl out of Claudia Hand Paints. It's just a simple linen stitch cowl. And I showed it to you a while ago because I finished it fairly recently. And I wear it fairly regularly. It's kind of, It's warm, but it's not super warm, so... It's warming up now, so I wore it today because it was windy, so it kind of keeps the chill out. But I thought, hey, I'll wear it for the podcast. So with that, I will say goodbye. I hope you have a nice week, and I will talk to you later. Bye!